Hi, this session is about setting up patron feeds to import user data into Koha. So Koha has a tool for importing users into your system manually. You can run manual tests with the staff interface before any automated processes are set up. And this means that the format of the file can be agreed in advance of any automation that we might be setting up with you. So uh, let me take you through the process. Um, in the tools menu on Koha, uh, in the users and circulation section, we have this import users tool. And if I go into this tool, it's, uh, there's a lot of data on there. There's a lot of information about how to set up the CSV file uh, and how to go about importing the borrowers into your system. Um, you will need a CSV file of user data. You can see the format here in the notes on the right hand side and it's discussed in great detail in the in the Koha manual. Um, but if I go to um, uh, if I go to an example file, you can have a minimal set of fields. So if I look at this example in Notepad of an example file of fields that you could import into the system, we can see it's quite um, sparse in a way. We've got user ID, card number, category code, first name, surname, email, phone address, address two, and date expiry. Uh, so it could be a minimal set of fields as small as that. Um, alternatively, uh, it could be a fuller set of values. Um, and again, if I go to an example uh, file in Notepad of the it, numbers of different fields that potentially you could be importing into your COA system, we can see that it includes a great deal more. Uh, what you do have to have is you have to have a list of header fields in the first row of your CSV file. Um, now, if I go to a an example file of a uh, of an import uh, of an import file here we can see that this row here is the header fields that are required in order to map the right user data to the right uh, field in the COA database. So we can see user ID, card number, category code, uh, branch code are all corresponding with the um, data in the um, the COA system. Uh, so these have to match. I need to have a category code that matches my uh, category codes in Koha. I need to have a branch code that matches my branch codes in Koha. Uh, so I need to be looking at my administration module and knowing what fields and what policy values have been set up. Uh, so in Koha, my branch libraries, I have main as a branch library code. That has to correspond with what I'm importing in my example. So here, my branch code, I've called it Lincolnshire. Well, that's incorrect. It isn't going to load because there isn't a branch code called Lincolnshire. So if I paste in my appropriate, um, uh, if I put in my appropriate code, main, it will now be the right value for the system. Category code similarly needs to match with my category codes, my user categories on the Koha system. So if I want to be loading my students, here we go, we've got a student code, uh, student category set up on this system. The code is ST. So going back to my import file, my category code needs to match up with what is on Koha. So if I change that to ST, in this instance. Now we're getting some correspondence here with what is actually in the COA system. Uh, so I need to be working with what's on the library system as well as what potential data is coming in from my um, external system, my student record system, for example. Um, so in addition to that, there are also some mandatory fields. So again, if I go back to my example, we've got mandatory fields. So the category code and the branch code are both mandatory fields, they're required fields, so they have to be coming into this data. Um, in addition to that, there are fields that you may have defined and the libraries may have defined in a system preference called borrower mandatory preference. Um, 
So if I look for a borrow mandatory pre preference, if I search for my system preference, um, here we have a system preference and it gives us fields that have been defined as mandatory on the system. Here we have surname and card number. But if you had additional fields defined in your borrow mandatory field, system preference, then they would also need to be in your incoming CSV file. So they must match valid entries on the COA system. <clears throat> so an another, a little bit more about thinking back to the tool that we're going to be using to import, um, a little bit about date formats. So here I've got an expiry date in my, in my incoming file of the 30th of the 7th, 2021, and that is my date expiry. So it's corresponding with that field value in the borrower's table. Um, the uh, dates and how they're configured should match the system preference called date format. And this is a system preference that's tucked away in this um, I18N, LN, L10N preferences. Um, it's date format and it defines how the dates are formatted on your COA system. The default is DD slash MM slash YYYY. Uh, it may yeah, but you need to check that and make sure that that is um, corresponding to any dates that you're importing um, using the CSV. The values also have to be zero padded. So um, in my example file, uh, it, it, the 07 for July, it has to be padded out. So it can't just be seven. Uh, again, another tip about the um, incoming file, um, uniqueness is required. The user ID and the card number are required to be unique. So um, again, something to bear in mind. Other things that you may want to bring in, um, the library may be using um, patron attributes or user attributes to give extended information about the borrower, incoming borrowers. Uh, that could be things like course code, um, the, the course that the borrower is, the, the new student is enrolled in. The COA manual, if I just flip out to the COA manual here, fully describes how you can configure those patron attributes. Uh, so it indicates how to define them um, in proceeding with the name of the patron attribute codes and a colon, and it's all enclosed in quotes if multiple values are defined. So it's all well documented on the COA site. But again, you need to confirm back in your systems administration module. So if I go back to administration, we have the patron attributes, user attribute types defined on the system. So there will be codes that represent things like course or different types of category. And these are the values that would need to be embedded as part of that incoming CSV data. So they, these, um, they would need to match. So once you've got your layout defined and the fields that you want to bring into the system, you can test that with the import tool manually prior to any automation, automation that we set up. So let's have a go at testing that now. Um, if I go up to my tools menu where we went before, and I go into import users. <clears throat> we can see that we can import users into the borrowers table. Uh, just gonna close down the file that I'm gonna to attempt to bring in. <clears throat> I select the file to import. So I simply browse to my uh, file and I look for my file on my uh, drive. There we are, CSV example. That's the one that I've been working from. I'm going to choose a, rec a field for record matching. So I'm going to choose card number. Um, I could use username or others listed in the, um, the pool down there. If, and then there's some values. If a matching record is already in the borrowers table, ignore this and keep the existing one or overwrite the existing one with this. Uh, so I might choose to ignore and keep a new or overwrite. Generally speaking, this process is going to be while we're still in a testing phase. 
Then we have an, a section that relates to user attributes, how you're going to deal with those. Are you going to replace all user attributes or replace only the user attributes that might be included in the incoming CSV? So actually with this incoming CSV, I, I, I haven't got any included. <clears throat> I'm just going to import that now. And we can see that we've got one imported record um, and none have been overwritten because there isn't a unique um, because there wasn't one already on the system. It gives us a little bit of feedback. And it, basically, we've got our, our field imported now onto the system and uh, our user imported onto the system. So what we should find, <clears throat> if I now search by the card number, um, it, we should be able to retrieve my user. I mean, the, the essence of this means is that we can set up our CSV file, define the fields and test it manually to ensure that the CSV is going to run correctly. Of course, the automation process, then we can, we, we can go through setting up that automation uh, process, uh, knowing that the incoming files are going to work first time round. Uh, basically, we create an SFTP account um, and then work with you for the most secure way to send the files um, and work with your IT teams on that. So I hope that's been useful to give some background about and uh, about how to set up uh, patron import files. Thanks very much. Mm -hmm.